I mean, now let's talk further on all of this. Sophia Nelson, a former House GOP counsel, a USA Today opinion contributor, and a columnist for The Daily Beast. She is also the author of the book, E Pluribus One. <laughs> also joining me is Guy Smith, who served as a special advisor to President Clinton during his impeachment. Uh, good to see you both. Uh, hey, it's friend. good to be with you. All right, and Sophia, it's been way too long. Oh, it my gosh, it goes been. back like years, so welcome back. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, uh, Guy, let me begin with you in this new testimony from an aide who says he overheard President Trump on the phone with the U.S. ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, asking Sondland about investigations, you know, into the Bidens. What is the potential impact, in your view, if indeed Sondland confirms, because he is to uh, testify publicly this week, if he confirms that account? It is, it is devastating, and it is a significant movement in collecting damaging evidence against the president. What happened is we now, we've been hearing from the Republicans for quite some time, it's all hearsay, it's all hearsay, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden it's not hearsay, mm -hmm. it's direct. And there was somebody else besides Holmes that also heard it. So Sullivan has got a big problem. He's already had to revise his testimony once. He's now going to have to clearly have to revise it again. Mm -hmm. And the, it, it, it just shows that there's amateur hour all around, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the tweet yesterday from uh, the president and Yovanovitch's testimony upset. Saying what? everywhere she goes, you know, it's bad. Right, sorry. <laughs> okay, hopefully you can hear me. You can hear me okay right I got now? You. Yeah, sorry, okay. I got you. Yeah, so the president tweeted, you know, while she was testifying, you know, they, essentially everywhere she goes, you know, it, it's bad. It's a bad outcome. And and there have been some you heard from the Intel chairman, you know, Adam Schiff, who says, you know, this is tantamount to harassing a witness. They're looking into it, taking it very seriously, guy. So what what do you think is the path forward on that? I think it I think it, it is one more in a pattern that go back to Cohen when he was um, uh, a, a witness and then testifying and that sort of thing. So it could very likely be an article of impeachment uh, in addition to the bribery thing. And the th important thing about bribery, bribery is, is to the way the founders saw bribery was using public office for personal gain. Mm -hmm. it, back when they wrote it, there was no criminal statute about bribery. And today we're applying criminal statutes. Mm -hmm. It's much broader than that. Yeah, so Sophia, that's a lot to respond to everywhere, you know, from the, <laughs> the alleged harassment, you know, of a, a key witness, um, you know, the uh, former ambassador, Yovanovitch, and then, you know, you uh, also have now this use of the word bribery that many Democrats are, are using. I mean, let's underscore that the moment of, you know, Yovanovitch, how potentially pivotal her testimony was and, and how, you know, she had described how devastating it was to hear about this smear campaign and then this would happen in the middle of her testimony. Listen. President Trump says <clears throat> the former ambassador from the United States, the woman, was bad news and the people she was dealing with in the Ukraine were bad news. So I just want to let you know. What was your reaction when you heard the President of the United States refer to you as bad news? I couldn't believe it. I mean, again, shocked, appalled, devastated that um, the President of the United States would talk about any ambassador uh, like that um, to a foreign uh, head of state, <laughs> and it was me. I mean, I couldn't believe it. The next excerpt, when the pre president references you, <clears throat> was a short one. But he said, well, she's going to go through some things. What did you think when President Trump told President Zelensky, and you read, that you were going to go through some things? I didn't know what to think, um, but I was very concerned. What were you concerned about? She's going to go through some things. It didn't sound good. It sounded like a threat. Did you feel threatened? I did. 
So, Sophia, you you know, you and, and everybody was watching that. It was a riveting moment. At the same time, you, I guess, were inspired enough to write a piece in the Daily Beast, you know, with this headline with Marie Yovanovitch, Trump goes nuclear in his war on women. So you're taking this more broadly beyond this moment. You see this as symbolic of, of a, a pattern of the president, you know, going after women or the use of his words, whether it's, you know, nasty, um, you know, um, he, he'll get physical in describing people. W wh why do you think this was a telling moment? Well, Fred, there's a lot you've said and that I need to respond to. Number <laughs> one, one of the biggest takeaways from yesterday in this whole process for me as a former committee counsel, as a lifelong, as you know, moderate Republican woman, is that the president of the United States of America has no personal discipline whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Leadership 101 requires you to be disciplined and to have good judgment. He has none. The fact is, during yesterday's testimony, it was very consistent with him to start tweeting and attacking people uh, that he doesn't agree with, right? Mm -hmm. But for him to continue to use the phrase, the woman, and to describe that then with adjectives of being bad or wherever she goes, it's bad, is very similar to what he did to the squad, to what he's done to Amarosa, he called her a dog, to what he's done mm -hmm. to other women, Rosie O'Donnell, Mika Brzezinski, we could go on and on. This president does not like strong, smart women, the mm -hmm. end. I don't think anybody can really argue that. And what was really disappointing to me yesterday, mm -hmm. that while the president is attacking her in live testimony as a lawyer, I concur with Guy that that is a possible article of impeachment. That is classic witness intimidation. You're the most powerful human being mm -hmm. on earth. So when she you are when threatening Schiff people, says, you know, we're taking it seriously. What are the options if, if at least by this committee, it's an uh, article. It's an article, Frederica. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not much. The Justice Department is not going to prosecute. This Justice Department, uh, you know, Attorney General Barr gave a speech mm -hmm. yesterday that's got everybody very upset. And he's not going to prosecute, so that's off the table. So I think that it is a article of, impeach, of impeachment. It's, mm -hmm. it's an obstruction. It's witness intimidation. And he did it in live time, which didn't help his side, the Republicans who had to try to argue uh, for him, and it, mm -hmm. it really handicapped them, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, Guy, you have, you know, Yovanovitch, you know, who, who who testified about, you know, what the consequences of raising your hand and saying something's wrong with this, never getting an explanation, you know, about um, why she was being let go. But then ahead of that, now you've got David Holmes with the State Department testifying last night, uh, you know, about overhearing the conversation. And then you'll have Mark Sandy today with the Office of Management and Budget, um, who was subpoenaed and appeared today. But there have been others with OMB uh, and, and inside the White House who have been subpoenaed who have defied it. And Mark Sandy is expected to be asked, you know, about what he knows about this military aid. How do you see this process, this building of a case um, unfolding? Do you believe the case is getting stronger? It is very much getting stronger. If you just think about the timelines, go back to August, late August, when the whistleblower complaint we learned about. Think about where we were on day one of the testimony. Suddenly there's this new news. Then there's Holmes yesterday. Sandy is not going to report that it's all wonderful and everything was just lovely. That isn't going to be what's going to come out. Next week we've got the colonel back, who was very involved heard the call, knows the call record was not edited the way he wanted it edited. And there, think about this also. There's a whole week, eight more witnesses that are coming next week. Sondland, who's going to get some real serious questions. It will be very entertaining to watch mm -hmm. the Republicans try to defend him. Mm -hmm. That'll make an NFL stretch coach proud to watch <laughs> that. <laughs> And so, Mia, you, you know, as a counsel for the GOP, you know, House in the late 1990s, what what do you see might be the approach um, for the Republicans? You know, how, how, how much of a stretch, <laughs> so to speak, as Guy makes reference to, are they going to have to make? How difficult Fred, is this going to be? What the approach needs to be is to honor their oath of office. This isn't about protecting the president. This should be about protecting the republic. 
every one of us, Republicans, Democrats, independents, should be concerned that the President of the United States is calling on his cell phone, talking to one of his boys who's an ambassador, just like that, like their boys, talking about God knows what. And he's so irresponsible that people can overhear. That means the Russians were listening to this call. Let's all be clear that if other people heard it in a restaurant, mm -hmm. the Russians were listening through the devices. And this, again, is irresponsible. He has no impulse control. And the next week is going to be difficult for Republicans. So I want to encourage Republicans to begin to act like members of Congress who care about the Constitution and mm -hmm. kind of leave Donald Trump where he's at and begin to focus on their duties and their oath and listen to their constituents about how they want them to vote on this. I think that's their best course going forward. Mm. And then quickly, Guy, do you think that's the turning point there this week? It will be a tipping point. We'll see if tipping. it comes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's possible that it will tip. Mm -hmm. But even if it doesn't, if it goes to the Senate and there is a trial and he is acquitted, what will happen, and we see it happening already if you analyze the polls in depth, mm. his base is being chipped away at. Imp people want more people are in favor of impeachment and removal. That will continue. Mm -hmm. And even if he's acquitted, he will be damaged fatally politically. Mm -hmm. All right. Guy Smith, Sophia Nelson, good to see both of you. Thank you so much. Yeah.